Hi everyone, welcome back to day three of Tainted Grail. If you're just jumping in here, part one's linked in the description, don't worry about that. We are about to find out what's happening in Whitening. So let's let's spend off oh let's let's start the day properly actually before I get into all of this stuff. So the in here needs to be reduced down to number five. Yeah, time is ticking away. And then reveal the next event card. So we have some random events coming up. We have good weather. Your first travel today costs one energy less. Experienced journeymen know to make the most of decent weather while it lasts. Okay. So then move guardians. Nope. Item and secret cards don't have them. So we can go to whitening. We can trade with the townsfolk. Uh, pay a food to gain a wealth. That's an option. Because, yeah, still got decent food. Only got one wealth. I think though, let's let's just explore first and see what we can find here. So that's going to be one energy, isn't it? Whitening. The hole is here as always, gaping right in the middle of whitening. The white lichen that gave this town its new name seems to grow out of it. It covers the walls of the nearby halls with a thick coat. Only close up, one can discover it is in fact a layer of small sparkling crystals like sea salt on the wooden posts of a pier. As you inspect it, several people watch you suspiciously. If you have the failed legacy status, I don't. Uh, if you have the winds of weirdness status, I don't. If you're playing Ile, which is uh, another one of the characters that I am presumably mispronouncing, uh, she's I'm not playing her and she's not in my party, otherwise select this option. Okie doke. If you have more than two rep, I don't, I have two rep, so we're going to have to press that one. It's unfortunate. Some sickly whitening men block your way. You look like trouble, one says. And we have enough of that here. Leave. Uh, if you have one or fewer aggression, nothing. I have two or more aggression, actually, so we're going to have to choose that one. The blood pounds in your veins. They will not tell you what to do. Uh-oh. If you were hoping for a battle, the sickly and malnourished whiteners were probably a disappointment. It's not a real fight. Their bones snap like twigs and their skin parts under the softest blows. Soon your opponents wriggle in the mud, bleeding, crying from pain and cradling broken limbs. Horrified children run out of the shacks to protect their mothers and fathers. It's hard not to feel bad about yourself. I didn't know that was going to happen. Uh, each party member loses a reputation. And if I had any empathy, I would lose, uh, I would lose terror. I would gain terror, sorry. Uh, exploration ends. Oh, well, what a waste of time it's been coming to whitening. Uh, so I lose a reputation that I gained, and I've just killed a load of people. Oh, dear. Okay, so we can pay foods again gain a wealth. I don't... No, wealth's going to be important later, isn't it? But let's let's go to the Charred Conclave. Travel is free, isn't it? Let's uh, Let's discard that now I've used my free travel, thanks to the good weather. And so when we go here, draw a grey encounter when you uh, enter this location once per day. So we can finally see something new. We have a clansman, uh, which uh, has uh, six value in this battle that we need. I don't know why I'm grabbing for six cubes. I need three combat cards, don't I? Okay, so again, uh, we have final blow, a bit early for that. Uh, ignore pain, crippling strike. So crippling strike does line up with practicality so that would give me two cubes right away out of the six that i need now this is a special card because you know normally the icons are back to back and so you cover up whatever's on the card when you play another one now this one stays out so when you play the card you gain two charges when he attacks you pay a charge to lose a cube less and draw a card because he's going to make me lose cubes so that could actually be perfect. And then this lines up with Courage, and I could play this card. It would only let me draw another card. So I need six, because if I, pl if I played this, I would get two more cubes. I would be allowed to play the card. I don't have two Courage, actually. So we would have to play this one first. I would get myself three more cubes, but I wouldn't be able to play anything else in the encounter, which yeah, wouldn't be great, would it? So yeah, we, we're going to... We're going to do that, so gain two charges. So it's got two charges on it. And then ignore pain. We can play, which just lets me draw a new card. Maybe I'll be able to play this one. We have powerful blow, which... And now this is gain a cube for every point of damage received. At the moment, he's got... Why haven't I put any cubes on him? He should have two cubes over here. So he's got 0 to 2. He would do a damage and lose two cubes, but he would lose one less cube thanks to that card there. So I would gain a cube 
if I took that damage, I could play the powerful blow. Actually, I can't because it hasn't got a play one more card symbol on it. So that's just going to have to be the end of this round of combat for me. So we can finally go on to some more combat. So we have the enemy attack, resolve the attack. So take a damage. So that's going to reduce my health by one and lose two cubes, lose all of my progress. But I can pay a charge to lose one cube less. So I just lose one cube and draw a card. So I draw a card. I am going to have to discard a card in a minute, unfortunately. So we've had the enemy's attack and then check readiness. If each party member has been activated, yes, go to end of turn. End of turn, discard down to three cards. Fine. Oh, we don't have to discard anything. Yes, because we draw afterwards. So then draw a card and start the next turn. So we can go back to, we've got no delayed abilities. So what would I like to play? So final blow, it's a bit early again. I don't have any cards that are going to let me play more cards. So this would, this would get me three more cubes out, which makes me take more damage, but lose fewer cubes. Because yeah, there would be three to four, so I'd take two damage and lose one uh, cube and lose none thanks to this. It cost me an energy. And then I would gain two extra cubes at the start of next turn when delayed abilities kick in. I think that's good. Because the other things, yeah, would put fewer cubes out, would still make me take more damage and would let me draw extra cards. Unless... Yeah, we so this is going to put three cubes out now. Let's do that. I'm going to choose to play this. So when you play the card, lose an energy. So I'm down to four over there. So actually, I have got four on it. And perfect final blow lines up. Look, neither of these have got play more cards on them. But final blow has. I do have a courage. I have two aggression. So this is going to put two more cubes out. Another one here. Three more cubes. Well, four plus three is more than six. So boom, that is the clansman destroyed. I don't even need all the charges of my crippling strike. And I loot two wealth. So I've got three wealth now. Brilliant. Glad I didn't waste any energy uh, trading in whitening. So yeah, they would get reshuffled back into my combat deck and the enemy goes away. So, we are now in the Charred Conclave with... Uh, it's cost me an energy, that fight, hasn't it? But I think that's been worth it. So there's no, there's no action to do here. So let's explore it. So it's going to cost an energy to explore, isn't it? And we can go to 104. Go. Charred Conclave. It doesn't take long to find it. You just have to follow your nose. The remnants of an enormous wicker man kneel at the bottom of a small veil. You were here when it was set alight years ago. The day was wet. The wicker man smouldered but didn't burn. Its victims, dozens of tightly packed druids, are still inside, their melted faces and charred beards pressed against the bars and looking toward the grey silent skies. Barely audible, ceaseless whispers seem to fill the air. Check before action. Are you playing Maggot? Or if he's in your party, select this option. No, I'm not. So we can stay a while and listen, dig through the remains, or leave while your sanity remains intact. Oh dear. Uh, I think let's, let's stay a while and listen. You stand there for a while, pondering whether this massacre was justified. The druids were blamed for the return of the Red Death, but without them, the plague kept on, while the Menhirs weakened. The whispers in the wind become louder with every minute. There's still some form of life left in the burnt-out husks. You wonder what knowledge or madness they can bestow. We can learn from the Conclave or leave. Well, at this point, let's, let's learn from them. Uh, pay one energy per party member. I can do that. I've only got two, so this is going to be the end, isn't it, if I don't want to be exhausted. Accept. The lipless mouths sneer at you. The melted fingers seem to beckon and call you. An angry whisper grows like the sound of the sea. Finally, you realise they want you to come inside, to step behind the charred bars where their black arms and melted fingers may close around you, into a place where your life should have ended with theirs. So do we go inside, or put your ear to the bars and gather what you can from here? Oh dear, I think going inside is going to be a terrible idea but I'm pretty sure that I would have thought that when I played it for the first time. So I'm going inside. Requires maggot or at least one uh, spirituality. Ah, so I can't choose that. Okay, then we'll put our ear to the bars. After a while, you learn to distinguish singular voices in the maddening cacophony of whispers. Several threaten you or throw curses for what your kin have done to the druids. Some cry out in agonizing pain. One describes a secret invocation and a forgotten ritual. If you have at least three magic, I don't have at least three magic. Each party member gains a magic. Uh, if I have an empathy, I would gain a terror. I don't have an empathy. Exploration ends. Oh, were they going to tell me something if I had a load of magic? 
Were they going to tell me the ritual? Oh, I don't know. Uh, we're going to have to... Oh, what we should do, though, this is going to require some uh, fancy financial footwork, isn't it? Uh, we're going to have to reveal a location because I've uh, I've moved along, haven't I? And not not revealed anything when I moved here. So we are going to need location 109, which is... Oh, of course, it's the Island Asylum. So this is where we would have needed to uh, take the, the, the wounded girl from the, the grove over there. If we'd, if we'd had more time and done it a different way. So, yeah, we can have dreams uh, here, but we're going to have dreams in this conclave, I am afraid. And pay a wealth to heal three things over here. Hmm, that could be interesting. Okay, then. So it's going to be end of day, isn't it? I'm not going to exhaust myself again. So rest, consume a food to gain a health and lose terror. I've not gained any terror yet because I've got no morals. Restore my energy to full. Uh, advance your character by spending XP. I've, I've not earned any more XP yet. Yeah? I've still just got the one. Uh, so we need to have a dream in 104, don't we? In your dream, you flee from a rolling wave of darkness, slowly consuming the land behind you. You try to pick your paths carefully, making sure to gather ample provisions along the way and rekindle any minhirs you find. After a while, the wave catches up with you and swallows you whole. You come back to the start of the dream. This time you flee as fast as your legs can carry you, but hunger, dead ends, and the beasts of this land quickly end your life. Oh, this comes with a hint. To survive, you need to move fast, but not at the cost of your resources or survival tracks. So, it's going to be a new day, isn't it? So, we have no expired men here, so we need to move this one down to four. Something needs to be done, doesn't it? Ah, turning these with one hand. Okay, and the next event card, another random event, and it is going to be New Threat. Draw cards from the Grey Encounter deck until you draw one. Oh dear. With the Guardian keyword. Put this encounter in the lowest numbered revealed location and shuffle the encounter deck. If there's no Guardian encounter in your Grey deck, ignore this card. Okie doke. So we might, uh, is there is there a Guardian encounter here? No, there is not. I believe that's probably because we've just got the easiest encounters for a single player chapter one. So, there we go. We don't have to worry about a guardian roaming about and uh, knocking us over. So, uh, that's the event card. We have no items and secrets still, so it's back to spending energy. So, do we go over to the asylum and see what's cracking? Maybe. Why not? Let's, uh, let's go over there. And let's... Mind you, if it's the... Oh, I might take that back. What if we choose something else over here? Because it is druids. They would know, wouldn't they, how to... Do them in here's. Uh, yeah, let's explore again. So it still costs us the energy. And so we can stay a while and listen. We could dig through the remains this time. Yeah, let's dig through the remains. You hum a joyful song to drown out the whispers and get to work. Prying apart health-melted bodies is grim and foul work, but you do find some valuables that were locked away with the unfortunate druids. If you don't have part one of the pillager status... I do not. Gain one random non-companion item and part one of the pillager status. Uh, everyone who has more than one empathy gains a terror. <laughs> well, the, yeah, that's, that's not me, is it? I've uh, clearly picked <laughs> a very uh, immoral character. So for this, we're going to come to the item deck and keep going until we get something that isn't a companion. All Mother's Tear. For zero energy, I can gain an energy, a health, lose a terror, and discard this item. Ooh. Probably worth waiting until I have, yeah, spent some energy, but I like it. So I'm not going to be able to choose that again. Do we listen to them again? Well, I haven't got three magic. Let's, yeah, let's, let's go to the asylum and see what is going on over there. So I can pay to heal myself, but there's no point in that. I'm going to have to explore. The sad thing is I can't get over to the Forlorn Swords this way. I'm going to have to come all the way back and spend loads of energy to do that. Okay, so we're going to 109 and let's see what's here. Island Asylum. The waves splash against the hull of the boat. A silent hooded man slowly ferries you to a secluded island. It's dark willow grove overlooked on three sides by an ancient necropolis carved into the side of the mountain. You know the sick are kept in deep dark holds, yet you still feel uneasy stepping down onto the shore. Grim monks, the keepers of this place, inspect your body despite your objections. Only then do they agree to listen to you. Do you have secret card 66? No. Do you have the tracker status on a dial? No. Uh, were you instructed to come back here at the start of the day? No. Uh, so I can hire myself as an assistant, tour the island's monuments, sneak into the forbidden depths of the asylum, or leave. Sneak into the forbidden depths, definitely. Roll a die 
Add one for each point, practicality and aggression. So the game does come with a lovely die. And so I do have one, two, three out of those attributes. So let's uh, roll a die and add three to it. That's four, so that's going to be seven altogether. Check the result in the app. Uh, was it one to two? No. Was it three to four? No. You managed to get into the deep halls unnoticed. Check before exploration. Do you have part five of Dreams and Prophecies? No, I don't. Archdruid Wormtoe is in one of the deepest cells, desperately sustaining himself with magic. The last strips of skin left on his body resemble the scales of a half-scrubbed fish. His mind, however, seems in good shape. It doesn't take long for him to recognise you're an outsider. He takes a long, hard look at you. If you're playing Maggot, if he's in your party, or if you have fewer than one magic, uh, no, Maggot is not in the party, and I have a magic. Listen to me, the druid says. We should let you all die for what you did to us, ungrateful filth. But the knowledge of the circle can't die with me. You have to listen. You have to remember. Gain secret card 11 if you don't have it yet. Okay, so gaining that magic worked out perfectly. Uh, so we have uh, Menhir rights. This is what we need. You can now activate Menhirs. The cost of this action can be found at the back of each location with a Menhir symbol. Oh, wow. So back to the app. Congratulations, you've completed your first quest. You now know how to wake the ancient Menhirs. When you finish a quest, make sure to always follow the instructions in the success section of your quest card. New task. Get to a location with a Menhir icon and activate the Menhir before your time runs out. Each party member gains 2 XP. Oh, wow. And gain part 5 of the Dreams and Prophecies status exploration ends. Ah, oh, brilliant. So sneaking around and being... Uh, being basically a, a bad guy has resulted in, well, results, hasn't it? So we're going to have to go somewhere with a Menhir, which is going to have to be up in Whitening, maybe? Or there is one in the mounds over there. But most importantly, we need to go back to this quest. So success, as soon as you have Menhir right, resolve the Chapter 1, Part 5, and do not change the structure of the rest of the deck. So we need to grab Part 5 out. Come here, Part 5. Uh, place this card on top of the active quest pile. Despite your best efforts to learn and perform the ancient rite, the Menhir in your town seems beyond your help. Disheartened, you realise your only hope is to try and enable one of the two statues from nearby locations. Activate a Menhir in one of the nearby locations, Four Dweller Mounds, 106, or Whitening, 107. When you activate them, resolve Chapter 1, Part 6, and discard this card. Okay, so that kind of seals it, doesn't it? We need to get over to Whitening, Although I did, I, we've got, I, I, it's tempting to explore, but let's let's go for it. I guess then at the same time I'm not spoiling too much, but uh, <laughs> I, I want to see more story. So we we have still got t time to do stuff. Do we want to stay here and have a dream on the asylum? What would we do though? Otherwise, we could have another explore here, couldn't we? Why not? Let's do something else here while while we're waiting. So we're going to 109 again, and let's choose something else. Do we want to hire ourselves as an assistant or tour the island's monuments? Let's tour the monuments. Book of Secrets. You take a walk along the shore of the island. Soon you lose sight of the mainland and enter a narrow beach in the shade of a tall cliff. You've come to the furthest point of the known world. Before you stretch is the silent ocean humans crossed 400 years ago, running from the Red Death. There's a stone here, its inscription almost entirely washed away by the wind. Astonished, you discover the writing claims this was the place where Arthur, the first king, came ashore with his followers. The relief depicts this very scene. You look at the retinue of knights and advisors around Arthur and suddenly feel like the butt of an elaborate joke. The person to the right of the king looks almost exactly like you. This discovery is so unsettling you fail to hear a group of bandaged asylum inhabitants sneaking up on you. Draw a Vagabond Grey Encounter. And if you win, draw the Weird Claimed Grey Encounter. Okay then, so we've got encounters to do, haven't we? So here is the Vagabond. We need five cubes to defeat him. Living on the trail quickly teaches you to prey on the weaker. He is fast. And if we look at our handy dandy reference here, fast, players can play a maximum of two combat cards per activation. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what he does when he does it, eh? So I have final blow. That's not going to get me five, is it? No. It'll get me three in one go, which isn't too bad, is it? So let's see. We have risky attack. This would let me draw a card and do two cubes. 
and then I would flip a dial. If it's the skull side, gain two damage on the enemy's turn. If it's the grail side, gain two damage. So this would almost win me the thing. And then I wouldn't be able to play final blow. Yeah, I couldn't play attack either. These haven't got extra things on them. Attack will make the enemy do more damage to me. Although I'll draw an extra card. But I will draw a card with risky attack. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for risky attack. And hope that I can cover it up with another card. The card that I draw. So yes, we're going to go for that. So it's going to be two cubes here. Draw a card. That's not got extra symbols on it. That's another risky attack. So it's all on the flip of a, what is it, dial? <laughs> not a coin. So let's, uh, let's see what we get. It's grail side. Boom. Exactly what I had planned all along. So we come over to the enemy's turn. There are two cubes here. He does two damage to me and we take a cube away. Uh, but, oh, actually, uh, he does need those two cubes straight away, doesn't he? Uh, that's, that, that hasn't got an enemy symbol on it. So he is taking, he's actually got four on. So he runs away. So I don't take the two damage. I'm not going to get the craftable item, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, he's uh, nicking off. So I need to shuffle my combat deck because we are about to go to the Weird Claimed, a man who ventured too far. So here we have the Weird Claimed. We need seven cubes to win. And uh, yeah, he's going to cause terror until he's got loads of cubes on him. Oh dear. So all I have is... Yeah, final blow's no good, is it? Throw would get me a cube. I can do another cube if I've got a magic to spend, but am I going to need magic to activate Menhirs? Uh, flip over a weapon or shield you're using to gain two cubes and the weapon is inactive until the end of combat. I don't have... Ooh, what is... This is just an item, isn't it? It's not a weapon or a shield. Oh dear. Never mind. So I can't do that, but this would let me get two cubes out, and then I could do final blow for three more. Not enough, is it? That's five. I can do ignore pain. No, I can't, actually. I would need to play an extra card to ignore pain. I could put this out first and just get... Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Just get a, a card, but then playing this only gets me one cube. If the card I draw is rubbish, though, this does let me gain a cube for the damage he's going to do to me. So yeah, let's, let's play this and I draw a card. He's not fast, so I'm allowed to play loads of cards if I get uh, the right combos, which I haven't. So do I want to leave that out? And I will get one. And then I can just play these other things later. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. I wouldn't be able to play all of them in one go. Because playing, playing this now, I can't use its ability. So let's wait. So we come to the enemy's turn. There are 0 to 2 cubes, so he's going to do a damage and make me gain a terror. So 1 damage plus 1 terror. But I gain a cube for every point of damage received. And then, uh, end of combat. Just make sure I'm doing it all right. Uh, yeah, we've had the enemy's attack. Everyone's gone. So we discard down to 3, draw a card. Just another standard attack, unfortunately. Not getting great luck with the draws, but we've had some uh, great luck in the previous battle, haven't we? So, yeah, final blow isn't going to get me to seven, is it? So we're going to have to... We can attack and then throw. Yeah, because throw at the moment is only going to do one cube or two if we pay magic. Whereas if we attack first, I do have the two aggression to activate that cube, and I can activate this cube. So that will put two out. So I will play that first. And so next I can play Final Blow. At the moment, with no magic, that's just going to put three more out. Six isn't enough. So no Final Blow just yet. And we're not going to be able to play the Final Blow after putting this out, unfortunately, because the play an extra card symbol isn't going to match up with anything. So this actually might mess us up next turn. This is only going to put one more cube out. And already in the three section... Yeah, already in the three section, he's going to do two terror to me. But if I leave this out, he's going to do two damage and two terror. And I don't want that, so let's do throw, although I'm not that happy about it. So that's just one more cube. And uh, yeah, I can't do the item. His turn, he's going to do a damage and two terror. So a damage, two terror. Discarding down to three is no problem. Draw a card, we have powerful blow. 
Nothing's matching up, is it? We can just not play anything. But we resolve the opportunity attack. He does an attack, and then I draw a card. He does one damage, and then I draw a card, and then he has his turn normally. Let's see, I could play this, and nothing would happen. I lose an energy for playing it, but then I could do final blow, couldn't I? I'm allowed to play an extra card, and it's got three on it. Brilliant. But losing an energy is going to exhaust me, which causes me a damage, because that's my festering wound talking. So I'm not going to get my full um, energy back tomorrow, unfortunately. But this is going to make three more cubes go out. We perform a victory check. I've got seven. Brilliant. Oh, I should have spent a magic earlier. I get a magic for defeating him. I should have looked at that. Uh, so I've got two magic now, though, if I need it. But most importantly, uh, shuffle that up in case we're having more combat. Most importantly, we can go back to the iPad and say that we won both encounters or the enemy ran away. The first ran away and we won the second one. Exploration ends. So, oh, well, I assume we avoided something bad happening. I was, I was hoping for good results there. But yes, sometimes <laughs> not terrible is the best you can hope for. I would kind of like to dream here. Yeah, let's dream here. I'm just going to stop there. We can, we have got a load of wealth. We could pay to get put back to, up to full health. I'm going to do that actually, because if we're going to, we have to go back up, which means another encounter. So yes, I'm going to pay a wealth to heal all the way back up. And uh, that would cost my last energy to do that. So, end of the day. Flip back. Uh, consumer food. Uh, this food's lasted quite a while, hasn't it? Uh, restore health and lose a terror. It's down, back down to two terror. And restore your health, your energy to four because I was exhausted. And uh, have a dream in the asylum. There are no real dreams in this place. The sleep is as cold and silent as the rocks of the island. Considering how much pain and death they've seen, perhaps that's a blessing. Okay, so it wasn't an action-packed dream, but it, it could have been. So we go to the next day. Uh, we need to tick down the min here to three. Time is running out. And uh, the event. Random event. Good weather. First travel costs one less. That suits me because we have less energy. We're going straight over here and we need to resolve a grey encounter. Actually, I'm forgetting. I can do some character advancement. I've got loads of XP. At least show you this once. Yeah, I'll spend two XP to draw three combat or diplomacy cards. Now I'm about to do a grey encounter, which means uh, that I'm going to be doing some combat, I think. So let's draw three combat advancement cards and see what we can uh, add to our pool. So basically there are ten advanced cards in our combat deck, and there are also... I can't remember how many it is. There are, there are quite a few that relate specifically to our character because you, you can mix and match the, the boards and there, are, there is a one extra character as far as I know. I'm sure that there, there will be more in the future that you can mix and match with. But yes, there are cards specific to your character in here as well. So let's look at these three and see what we would like. So I have Gather Strength, just a generic card, uh, able to be played on top of other things. Uh, at the end, lose a cube and draw two cards. I don't really like that, but it does give you a double at the bottom there when it comes out again. So that's that's what you're kind of gearing up for there. We have one of my cards, find vulnerability, draw more cards. Oh, wow. There are a lot of cards, but it's, it's going to cost you a magic to play it again. I don't like that. Retribution, uh, play it and draw another card. Uh, when you play it, gain a cube for each missing point of health. Hmm. I have healed myself to full. I think... Gather Strength. Just give me that double at the bottom, I think. Gather Strength is going into my deck. So maybe we'll get to show off my new, uh, my new combat card. Uh, we have a... Oh, a, tra a Travelling Merchant. Draw three random items. You may buy any craftable item from this pile for one wealth and any other item for two wealth. You may sell any of your items for one wealth. So I have two wealth. I could buy any of these things. Uh, so it's craftable items are one. That's a craftable item. Ignore the effects of heavy rainfall and unnatural chill events. Uh, what about a weapon, poison dagger? Flip this in combat. Place three delay on the encounter card. During each delayed ability step, remove one of these tokens and gain a cube. Oh yeah, so the, the poison is uh, affecting the, the enemy. I like that. Mead, discard when resting during this rest. Ignore the effects of exhaustion, nightmare, and the howling gale events. I want the poison dagger. I'm going to sell my tier, actually. So this is only going to cost me one. Just so I've got some wealth left over. And I've got this poison dagger. So if that card comes out again, I get to flip that. Brilliant. So uh, no enemy to fight. 
So that, uh, and my yeah, my first movement was free, wasn't it? So next up, we're going to come over here for a, a movement. Uh, draw a blue encounter when you encounter this location. We have Breath of Weirdness. Have a look at that static canvas. Uh, we have um, alleyways twist toward the sky. Houses bend at impossible angles. Weirdness is here. Do you uh, navigate the anomaly, roll a die and add your spirituality? which is zero, if the result is lower than four, fail, or avoid unnecessary attention. Roll the die and add your caution, which is one, if the result is lower than three, fail the encounter. So I'm going to try and do the caution one then. That's more likely to happen, isn't it? So r roll a die and add one to it. Where did I put that die? Here it is. So I need uh, three or more, and I get to add one to it. It's three. I successfully... Uh, do this, which is two magic. Brilliant. I am all magicked up. I would kind of like to have failed. It would have lost me energy, so we would have had to go to another day. We would have been exhausted. But I would like to have seen a purple encounter. We've seen a lot of grey. Uh, we haven't seen any purple, I don't think. But hey, that's uh, that's the way it goes, isn't it? So we can now perform this action. Inspect a min here. You may perform this only in link locations with one. Uh, we can. It's on the back of the card, but we can... Uh, Consult the app again. Uh, in 107, you see this uh, icon in the corner over here, the Minhir. Uh, the requirements requires all characters and the Minhir writes secret card. I have that. Pay three energy, a health, a wealth, and a magic per player. Put a new Minhir on this location and set its dial to nine. So we could wait another day just so I wouldn't be exhausted. Now let's do it now. One, two, three. Uh, lose a health for being exhausted and a wealth and a magic we can put a new min here out look at uh, look at that and yeah that's going to go over here with uh, let's just use this dial with nine all up in its business or actually nine minus one per player i was wondering why there wasn't a nine on there of course uh yeah so that's uh, going to be set to eight and so now when you activate one of the men here's uh, resolve the uh, part six card from the event deck and discard this card. So the part six card, it's telling me some congratulations. Congratulations, you've completed your first chapter of the Fall of Avalon campaign. Each character gains two XP and a magic. Ooh, two XP, so I'm back up to three again. If I'd waited, then I could maybe have gotten an attribute, but I took that card. I wanted to show you some cards. Each uh, character gains one free combat deck advancement. Oh yes, could have absolutely waited, couldn't I? Let's have a look at some more advancement cards, though, eh? We can have um, Charge, which, yeah, we could, is easy for us to play again, and it gives us two extra cubes. And I don't mind having the double aggression there, because I've got that. Uh, again, easy shoulder slash, easy to play again. Lose one cube less and prevent a damage. Definitely tempted by that one. And find weakness. Uh, I would get to play again if by spending a magic and get to play card. And it's got a triple at the bottom. Ooh, I really like Shoulder Slam though. That's going in the old combat deck. Okay, discard your event deck, place any discarded random events back in the random event deck and shuffle it. Then either save your game or draw a chapter shoe, a chapter two setup card rather than chapter shoe and uh, follow its instructions to begin the next chapter. So there we are. I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's really good, isn't it? We got through the entire first chapter, which admittedly is a is a, a shorter chapter. It's you know, introducing you to things. You're uh, you've only just been able to start activating them in here, rather than you know having uh, multiple ones out and having to maintain them to keep your locations there and stuff. Uh, but there we go. I hope this has given you a good idea of what Tainted Grail is like. If you would like to know what I think about it, you can click the link at the end of the video or it's in the description now if you'd like to skip the next 20 seconds or so of waffle uh, but thank you very much for watching again if you'd like to support the channel tell people about it it would be amazing uh, but thank you very much for watching this and i'll see you for the next game bye everyone